said, he ain't called. Ain't that right? Amen. Glory to God, brother. We got something to brag about today. This man, this man, he's the man right there. That's the man Christ Jesus, the Bible says. The man Christ Jesus. He's a man. That's right. He's male. Every bit of it. Amen. All right. Let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Hosea, chapter number 10. The book of Hosea, it's near the end of the Old Testament. You that don't read the Bible, uh, near Hosea, chapter number 10. I want to look at a verse of scripture here this morning, um, about three, two or three verses, and bring you the message that I felt like the Lord put on my heart for today. If you're visiting with us again today, we want to make you very, very welcome. Make yourself at home. Try to get help from the Lord. Don't don't listen to me. Listen for the voice of the Lord as he speaks to us through his word. Hosea chapter number 10 and verse number 1. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Now I want you to look there at the beginning of verse 2. Where it says they have made images. The, the people of God made images and they are worshiping them. And he said in verse 2, their heart is divided. Their heart is divided. And what he said, what he meant was, you know me, I'm the real, true, living God. And then you're over here serving these idols too. Your heart is divided. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the tragedy of a divided heart. The tragedy of a divided heart. I'm going to show you a little thing here. To keep this in your mind while I'm while I'm talking to you, and I want you to look at this little thing here. This little paper is a heart, and this is Sweetheart Week, in which we all, you know, think about Sweetheart. We had Sweetheart Bank last night coming up this week. There's a long story of history of Saint Valentine and all that stuff. You know, not all that's Christian, but there's sure ain't nothing wrong with us being nice to each other and being good to our mate, and so. We, that little heart symbol there has become a sweetheart. Then you'll see I've got it divided. It's divided. So it's not complete, full. Half one way and half the other way. And that's what I'm preaching about this morning. The tragedy of a divided heart. Now I want you to think about uh, this morning. Israel was God's chosen people, earthly chosen people. And he brought them out of Egypt's bondage. And gave him the Ten Commandments there in Exodus 20. You know, if you've been reading your Bible. You know, they come out in Exodus 20. And uh, he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he, not only that, he said, not only, not before me, but beside me. You'll love no other. You'll have no other God. I'll try to get this on here. I don't know if I can get that to stay on there or not. Um, I'll, um, oh, fat boy here, break that table in. Ain't careful. But, uh, man, hope that stays right there. High fat hearts one way, high fat the other way. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I tell you, the curse, the curse of American Christianity is that we have a generation of Christians in America whose part serves the Lord and believes in him and loves him and part lives just as happy with his enemies. That's right. He said, how... Could you do this? He said, how could, how could you let me bring you out of Egypt, deliver you out of bondage, and then go right down there and worship them false gods that I already delivered you from? Why would you do that? And he said, their heart is divided. Now, Hosea, to give you a little introduction, was one of the Old Testament prophets, obviously, 689 to 611 B.C. Six, before Jesus came, first time. Nearly 70 years was his ministry. This was in the days, when you read those kings, Uzziah, Ahab, Hezekiah. 
The book of Hosea has 14 chapters, 197 words, and 5,170 odd, odd words. In this story, uh, we see a, uh, a strange marriage. God, Hosea was an example. God used his, his marriage to Gomer. If you read the Bible, uh, you, you guys think you got it bad? What if your wife was named Gomer? And, and he said, uh, uh, <laughs> and your name was Goober. I'd really be wrong. But, uh, uh, but I, I can't imagine what she looked like. But anyway, married her and they had some problems. And, and she ran off or something like that. And then I had to get that thing worked out. And, and God was saying, Hosea, you are a literal, you are a literal. I had this picture in my head uh, of, of Gomer. And, and uh, said, uh, he said, Hosea, you are a picture of me and Israel. You're a picture. God used Hosea and said, you know, isn't that strange that a, God would use a man's life to illustrate his dealings with a, with a nation? And, and yet he did. He did. And he said, just like uh, Gomer had run off and been unfaithful to you, Israel is being unfaithful to me. And more than one time in the Bible, people, God, when we get out and we start flirting with the world, God calls that spiritual adultery. Many times, many times. So who will be friends of the world, enemy of God. And men, you've got to guard against our hearts. Say, well, the Lord knows I love him. Well, uh, is your heart divided? That's a curse on our generation. A divided heart. The Bible puts a tremendous amount of emphasis on your heart. The Bible puts more emphasis on your heart than it does your brain. And there is a difference. Now, when I talk about the heart, you know, people say, oh, good night, that's ridiculous. All that heart is a little organ in here uh, that pumps blood through that. I understand that. I ain't crazy. But there's more to it than that. There's something. Your heart is the seat of your emotions in the, in the Bible. It's different from the mind. The heart and the mind different. That's what the Bible said. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And I've illustrated it a hundred times. I'm sitting here in class when I was about in eighth grade, and I could see out the window and see them boys out there playing uh, uh, softball on the field. And I was looking like that. And somebody said, Danny, Danny. Like, yes, teacher. Yes. What's three and three? Six. <laughs> Danny, what's three? See, that's my mind. That's my heart. See the difference? You see the difference? You, you mind like a, a calculator, and it, and it you know, four and four is eight, eight and eight is 16. Of course, in our generation, whatever you want it to be. Uh, <laughs> true, true. Yeah. And uh, uh, you can believe a cow jumped over the moon, brother, and if you, it's, it's your truth, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, they, I, that's my heart. My heart's out there. And eventually, you know where people are going to go? They're going to go where their heart is. Eventually. Eventually, there's people sitting in church every Sunday and their hearts out yonder somewhere and it won't be long. That body follows that heart. Won't be long. Never fails. Uh, that's why the Lord said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with all thy heart, with all thy mind. The Bible said in Proverbs 23, 26, my son, give me thine heart. Now, the illustration is, the sweetheart is, uh, when, when, you, when you're married here this morning, your husband is supposed to be your sweetheart. Your wife is your sweetheart. Now, we just heard a tremendous lesson in Sunday school about wives last week, about husbands, and uh, it's something you got to work at. This husband and wife business is something you have to work at, work at. You just naturally stay madly in love forever. Yeah, you, that's, that's TV. That's not real. Them people don't. <laughs> uh, but you have to work at it. You have to work at being a good wife. You have to work at being a good husband. You have to work. And when your heart is divided, you got problems. You got problems. We all get like that once in a while. Let me talk about divided loyalty. Loyalty. Every man wants his wife's loyalty. Every woman wants her husband's loyalty. What if what if you were sitting in the house one day and you had a girlfriend or a fiance and you said, honey, do I have your heart? Well, sure you do. And you know what's next? Is all your does your heart belong to me? Absolutely, yes. All the time. And she says, well, Sunday through Friday. And he said, what does that mean? Say, so, well, it's yours on Sunday through Friday, but on Saturday, I like to go out with my friends and, and we do some other stuff. And well, what about me? Well, you're, this, this is my time. 
and and we do some things that you might not, and there ain't a man in here. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with girls going out doing stuff that ain't wrong. Nothing wrong with that. You're having, going shopping with the girls, doing stuff with the girls. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know what I'm talking about. You know about she said now, look, buddy, I love you. I love you, Joe. But on Saturday night, I go see John. No, this ain't going to work. Well, you shouldn't fuss. You get it six days a week. That's divided loyalty. If it's half and half, you really got a divided heart. There is not a woman in here today. If your husband said, honey, I love you. I'm going to pay the bills. I'm going to make sure you and the kids are taken care of. But on Friday night, I'm going to go out with this other woman. No. Nope. Ain't going to work. That's divided loyalty. The Bible puts a lot of emphasis on that. The Bible puts a lot of emphasis on loyalty. The word loyalty means strong support and allegiance. It means dedicated to something. Honey, I'm yours. Completely? Yes. Well, all the time? Well, most of the time. You should be glad you get more than anybody else. And no, nope, uh, that ain't going to work. I, I, that ain't going to work. There's not an employer in here today that wants an employer, employee that's just half loyal. He might show up. He might not show up. He'll work one day and not work. He has divided loyalty. When you go to work a job, you are given a certain amount of loyalty to that job or that company or that uh, that firm or whatever you work for. When you, uh, look, when you join a church, you are given a certain amount of loyalty to, to your church. And when you love the Lord, get rid of the Lord, you're supposed to love him with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength. And that's what I'm preaching about today. It, it ain't it ain't a pretty sight when you see the situation that people are in today. There's divided loyalty. Second, there's divided living. There's divided living. Now there's some examples of this in the Bible. And one of them is Samson. You know, Samson was a great, tremendous example uh, of this. He was he was hot, he was cold, he was in, he was out, he was he was for the Lord, he's for the devil. He Samson had a had a divided heart. Let's put it that way. Old Samson, he could go out one day, take the jawbone of an ass, and slow a thousand men. I mean, he knocked their brains out. He he done the Lord's work. He he killed the Lord's enemies. He said, "You're Philistines. You're wicked. You're worse than false gods. We're getting rid of you. We're cleaning out. Yay! He's he's the best man ever was. And then the next day, he's down there looking around at some harlot. The Bible said that's what it said. And so you know, Samson got this thing where he said. Uh, I do love you, Lord. I do, Lord. You know I love you. Good night. Lord, you know I'm out there killing the Philistine, taking care of everything. But he's out here with a harlot? No. His heart was divided. Now, old Samson finally got it right. But it cost him his power. And it cost him his testimony. And it cost him his two eyes. And he paid a real price. Boy, if Samson had stayed right with God, woo, can you imagine? They tried to heal him up one time and locked him in the gate. He picked up the gate ten times bigger than his pulpit just to be just to show him and picked him up and carried him a mile or two outside town, dropped it down. But he had a divided heart. Peter in the Bible is another picture of that. You know, Peter, buddy, he, he was the only disciple that walked on water. The only one. Uh, people criticize him. Yeah, he walked up there two or three steps and fell. He took more than anybody else. He at least had, he had more faith than anybody else. He took a step out there like this, and he went, boom, and the water held him up. And he started walking up pretty good, walking up pretty good. He'd done better than anybody else. He sunk after a few steps, but he, he had a lot of faith. He, he, he was on the Lord's side. He took that sword and whacked that guy's ear off. Whack is a Greek word you uneducated people don't know. Uh, that means he severed his ear from the, of his head. And uh, he said he took that ear off, bam, like that right there. Nobody else did that. I'm telling you something. He wasn't aiming for his ear neither. Uh, he was trying to split that guy wide open. And Peter loved the Lord. He'd stand up for him in a heartbeat. And yet he got out there and his heart got divided and he cursed and denied the Lord and said he didn't even know who he was. You see that? That's a tragedy of a divided heart. I see it all the time. We see it and hear it all the time. You're like, uh, you're like a, a man who, who is married and loves his wife and goes out with the boys uh, to a, a bar and takes his wedding band off and and goes in there and, and just uh, so that it's a message to all the other girls. 
uh, I'm, I'm available. I'm open. That, he said, well, I'm going back home. My, my, my wife, she knows I love her. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That ain't going to work. You say, well, I wouldn't care if my husband. There's something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Uh, you know, I hope that's not that bad, surely. Uh, and, and you might feel that way sometimes. But, you know, you don't really. Not really. Really. If somebody sent you a picture on your phone of your husband at work, and he had his arm around the pretty little secretary, and it's all chummy like this, there ain't. I mean, if you love your husband, that's going to bother you. And when you come to him and say, okay, what's that? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing didn't happen. Well, something, something happened. You said, mighty close there. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. It's, you're, you're old fashioned. You're, that's ridiculous. I, 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 we're just friends. Uh, da, 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 da. There ain't none of you women put up with that. None of you. I don't care. I don't, I'm not accusing you of adultery, but you ain't going to be chumming up, setting your arm around some girl at work. There's no, and you got a picture on your phone. There's not a man in here today that if somebody, all of a sudden you got something on your phone, and it's your wife at work, and she was like this with a guy, if, if you love her, that's going to bother you. Man. We have in, we have jealousy inside of us. You say, tell you one thing. I'd go down there. Boy, I'd, I'd take care of that fella. <laughs> and, and you should feel like that, really. But listen, people. Uh, this don't happen. But this is what I thought about last night when I was praying. Wonder how many pictures the devil sends God. He says, look here. You see him? You don't think it hurts, hurts him? You don't think it hurts the Lord when we're friends with his enemies? We dance to the devil's music? When we enjoy the devil's movies? Ah, oh, y'all. That's a divided heart. You, when you get saved, you say, Lord, I love you with all my heart. With all my, and that's easier said than done. I've been saved since I was 18 years old. And my heart gets pulled this way and pulled that way. And the world pulls you and pulls on you and pulls on you. But there's got to come to that point when you say, Lord, I'm loving you with all my heart. I don't want to do anything that you wouldn't be approved of. I wouldn't want, I don't want the devil. It don't happen. I'm making an illustration. I don't want the devil sending God no pictures of me out there flirting with his enemies. It's a divided heart, people. It's divided. Your heart is divided. Tell you a story. I read about this Moravian missionary, and years ago, still some people would give their all to the Lord. When people got saved, they give everything to God. And Romans twelve one says that he said, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God." What I'm preaching here this morning, a lot of people would call crazy, overboard, fanatic, ridiculous, and everything. This is normal Christianity. It is normal for every Christian to submit yourself to God. There's not a person in here this morning that has a right or an excuse to say, well, I love the Lord, but you know, I'm going to play around a little bit over here. You don't have no right to do that. You ain't that cool. You ain't that smart. You're not that great. Listen, we all, starting with me, right on down to the tiniest person in here this morning, we all are to love the Lord with all of our heart. And you got to work at it. You got to work at it. And I read this Moravian missionary, he went to the West Indies to be to be to become a missionary and try to reach those people. And they wouldn't let him in. And the government would not allow him to come in. And he said, i got to get in. God's put it on my heart. And they said, you can't come in. He said, I've got to get in. God's put it on my heart. I want to help those people. I want to reach those people. They said, you're not coming in here. And he went back. And that country had slavery. And he sold himself to a plantation owner to be a slave. And he told them, he said, look, they won't let me come here as a missionary, as a preacher, but I'm going to give you my life, and you'll own me from now on. And the plantation owner said, all right, come on. I'll give you a place to sleep. I'll give you food to eat. And he worked with the rest of the slaves all the time, and every day when they'd go out in the fields and work, he could witness to them. That's some heart there, buddy. You talking about giving your whole heart? That's your heart. It wasn't like, 
Lord, I'll live for you, but good night. Look what happened. You didn't tell me it's going to be like this. And, I, and you know, they're having something over here, and I know you don't like it, but Lord, if, if you don't mind, just look the other way for this weekend while I go to this part. And Lord, if you don't mind, don't watch it. Lord, I know that you, I know, but good night. I go to church every Sunday. That's what I'm talking about. This. That's killing our churches this morning. That kind of attitude. They ain't a man in here put up with that from your wife. They ain't a woman in here put up with that from your husband. Why do you think that the Lord, well, he knows we're not perfect. He should be all right with it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He wasn't with Israel. He said, you've got a divided heart. That's what's wrong. I, I mean, do it like old Billy Bray. Billy Bray is one of the great missionary, uh, preachers in church history, and you should all learn about the famous Billy Bray. He shouted all the time. All the time. And old Billy Bray go down the road shouting, and he'd say, one foot, right down, he'd say, amen. And the other foot, and he'd say, glory. Amen, glory. Amen, glory. I've tried that uh, when I was running. I say, I say, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. I tried it. I don't know if it doesn't mean any good or not, but I tried it. I have an old Billy Bray. He went down the road and said, amen, glory. Amen, glory. Like that. And I asked him one time why he's so happy all the time. And old Billy Bray said this. He said, he has made me glad and nobody can make me, uh, make me sad. He's made me shout and nobody can make me doubt. He's made me dance and leap and nobody can keep down my feet. I was born in fire and I can't stand the smoke. That's the way God wants his children to be. After all, Jesus gave it all for us. The least we can do is give our all for him. And God's people say it. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. Amen. We was talking about uh, Brother Ray last night at, at the Sweetheart. <laughs> Remember Brother Ray Mark? Brother Ray was a character. And I, I still miss him. And uh, is it all right if I talk about him for a minute, Kim? Uh, oh, Brother Ray, in an honest moment of confession, he's talking about when they were dating. Everybody's talking about when they were dating before they got married and how you get their heart and you're sweet on this one person. And I think I got it, the story wrong. Like, but anyway, he was he was dating, double dating. So him and his girlfriend's in front seat and the other, no, something like that was in the back seat and Janie was in the back seat. So I've got that right. Okay. Anyway, Ray said that he really liked her. But he was with this girl, and he was dating this girl and had his hand back there holding hands with Janie. I thought, Brother Ray, I can't believe he said that. I'm crushed. But and, 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 and we all laughed about that and had a good time. And I, I can just see I can see him doing that. Uh, I was a, he was a very honest man when it comes to stuff like that. And you say, Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I'd been her, I'd have kicked him out. The, well, how do you think the Lord feels? Really, people. I'm not trying to be judgmental or or, or uh, what they call it. Uh, uh, I don't know, self-righteous, nothing like that. How do you think the Lord feels when we save us and we love him with all our heart and he looks down here and we're watching dirty movies? You ever had that happen to you? You ever had somebody be unfaithful to you? It hurts. It hurts. And so it's not like, oh, good night. Christian life's boring. Can't do this. Can't do that. Everything's sin. I know how Danny is. No, you got it all wrong. It's love and devotion and loyalty to the one that saved you. We're not, I'm not, I don't do right because I'm scared he's going to knock me in the head. If I don't, that's a good reason. But that's not why I do right. I loved him because he first loved me. Amen. It's divided living. It's straddling the fence. The Bible said it's like blessing and cursing proceeds from the same mouth. Brethren, these things ought not to be. We're not, you're, you're supposed to. That, and, and by the way, that's what makes people get saved is when they see a Christian that does right at work, at school, at, in the community. When they see you consistently living for the Lord and doing right and doing right, they say, you know what? That person ain't no hypocrite. That's what the world can't stand is hypocrites, right? What the world cannot stand is people saying, I go to church every Sunday, but they live the same way them people do out there. Wear the same clothes, go to the same places, participate in the same activity where there ain't really no difference between us and them except to show up to church once in a while. That's exactly what we don't need. Amen? We're supposed to rent. Remember how free you was with your money? When you first started dating her, boy, I mean, you'd take her to that some weird place like a Brazilian... Ruth Crisp or something or another, like some uh, overrated waste of money. <laughs> and boy, you didn't, I'll spend big money on you, baby. I love you so much. I'll spend. Now, it's uh, Taco Bell. 
Well, we can't afford it. You know, now, see, you know, the Bible, what's the Bible says? Where your treasury is, there is your what? That's what it says. You know where your heart is? Where you spend your money. Your treasure is where your heart is. And when a man, when a man, when a man starts saying, gosh, that's a lot of money. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to give. I know I was crazy when I first got saved, but God, look how much I could do with this extra. And starts holding that money back. That's just, that's sign your heart's pulling back. And I'm not preaching money. I mean, it's, it's don't benefit me one way or the other. I, Lord will take care of me either way. I'm not saying this because I want your money. I don't. What I'm saying is, when you're right with God, you're free with your money. You're free with it. I know some people to tie it in a bark on it. They, they sing through their nose, keep wearing their false teeth out. I, I, I'm, it's, <laughs> remind me of that old man and woman. You want to hear a good one from the country? Old man and woman sitting at a restaurant one day, and he's, oh, uh, she's sitting there just looking out the window like this. And he's over just a chowing down like that. And the waitress comes and says, what's the matter, ma'am? Is the food not good? And she said, yeah, but Paul ain't through my teeth yet. That's pretty tight there, ain't it? Ugh. I, I remind me of some church members I've met. Buddy, they carry, they got that little nest egg. And I'm telling, brother, I'm telling you, uh, the FBI couldn't get there. Listen, be free. Be free with you give it. Be free. Lord's been good to you. Be free with it. God's been blessing you. He's blessed me. Sometimes when I get stingy, and I do, I do, I'm a man. All men get stingy. That's a trait of men. Not saying women don't, but men are worse. How's that for sexist? Uh, men are naturally stingy. That's why the Bible said, husbands, love your wives. And God never said that to a woman. Now, the Bible does teach that a woman should love her husband. But they're not commanded to like they're commanded to teach the younger women to love their husband. But the, the Bible commands a man to love his wife. You know why? He struggles at it. He likes old number one. And you got to be careful with that kind of attitude. It's uh, I said one time, it's a sin to make counterfeit. Or it's a crime to make counterfeit money, and it's just as big a crime to make a counterfeit Christian. And live so that you're not what you're supposed to be. It would hurt. If you saw your girlfriend. Or your wife. Doing something that betrays. I mean it hurts. I don't know if anybody's ever been through that. But there are people in here who have. And there's no pain like that. You can take physical pain. Physical pain's bad. But it just hurt the arm. You know, it don't. It, the, there's a there's a certain pain that comes with a, when your heart's hurt, a broken heart that you don't have no other way. If you ever had your heart broke, you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all ain't never had your heart broke. Everything's always worked out for you. You get anybody you want. You you're the top of the line. You you've never had you've never had to chase nobody. You, you're all that, and I'm happy for you. But if you've ever had your heart broke, you know what I'm talking about. Don't have a divided heart. I read a story about a little boy in court. And this little boy that had him up for adoption, and and he had he had been in a bad fire when he was young, and and uh, one of the the neighbors, the company, his parents were were died in the fire, and and a man, one of his neighbors, come in and grabbed him and uh, wrapped him up in a blanket and got his hands all burned and everything, and saved that little boy. And they took him and put him in state custody. The DSS put him in custody of the state. And time went on, and all the things got settled, and all the parents' stuff got sold and everything. And it come time up for him to be adopted. And, and they were talking about ad adoption. There's a lot of people wanting to adopt kids that can't have kids. And they had court that day. And they said when they come to court that day, that there was there was three people showed up wanting to adopt that little boy. One was a well-to-do man, lawyer, had a lot of money, nice clothes, everything. They said, uh, uh, what, what would you like? They said, Your Honor, we'd love to have a little boy like that. We got the means. We got the money. We, got a nice, we already got an extra bedroom. We'd be glad to take him in. The judge said, okay. Next fellow come up. He said, Your Honor, me and my wife are decent, moral people. We've already raised our kids. 
We'd love to have that little boy in our home. And we can give him this and we can give him that. We can send him to college and we can pay for everything. We can give him everything a young man might ever want. He said, and then that man stood up. He said, Judge, I don't have a whole lot. I just live in a little house down the road here. Don't have a lot of savings. But I love that boy and I want him. And so they, they took him. He'd, he'd grown up a little bit and they said, where do you want to stay? And he said, I want to stay with that man. And they said, why? Over here, you can have any bicycles, you can have toys, you can have your own room. You know what? And he said, I want to stay with him. Did you see his hands? And he had them scars in his hands. He said, that's the man that loved me right there. That's the man that went in that fire and pulled me out. He said, that's the man I want to live with right there. And I'm telling you, I thought about that and I thought, Lord have mercy, people. Can we see the scars in the Lord's hands? Look what He done for us. I don't know how to beg us to do right. I'm preaching to myself. I'm guilty as anybody. Lord have mercy. What a story. How a greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life. It ought to be my privilege to give him my whole heart. My whole heart. He said one time, years ago, it was, it was Valentine. And uh, Valentine's Day, and all the family is sitting around the table. And they was getting ready to ask the blessing on the food. And he looked over there, and there's a little girl about five years old crying. And he said, what's wrong with you? She said, nothing. He said, what's wrong with you? And she said, nothing. He said, honey, what's bothering you? She said, well, Daddy, I made you a valentine. And she said, I tried to get it right, and I messed it all up. And I, cut, I was trying to cut it, and I cut my finger, and, and it just all out, and I just threw it under the bed. And I was going to give it to you, but it's all messed up. And he said, go in there and get it. And she said, you don't want to see it. It's all messed up. You don't, it, it's bad. I, I don't want to. He said, go in there and get it. So she went in there and got out under the bed, and it was all cut wrong, had blood all over it from her finger. And he said, let me have it. She said, here it is, Daddy. It's ugly. It's awful. And he said, I'm, I said, that means the world to me. I thank you. I want it just like it is. You know, I tell what God's saying to you here this morning. There's people sitting in here this morning. Your, your hearts are all messed up. There's people sitting in here this morning. Deep down inside you, you got all kind of junk. And your life's like that right there, just divided. You don't know which way you want to go. You, you love the Lord, but you love the devil too. You love the Bible, but you love wickedness too. You love church songs, but you love dirty songs too. You know, that's a divided heart. You know what the Lord wants you to do? Just give it to Him just like it is. Give it to Him just like it is. We sing, just as I am without one plea, that thy blood was shed for me. Give it to Him just like it is. Say, so, you know what I'm going to do, Brother Danny? I'm going to get in that altar this morning, and I'm going to give Him my heart and say, Lord, I don't want to have a divided heart. I don't want to worship you on Sunday and false God on Monday. I can't do that. Look, people, you know the world, do you know the battle we're in? We cannot fight and win the battle that we're up against with our kids coming up if we're not right with God. Man. Can't do it. Can't do it. Our heart cannot be divided. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Everyone standing, please. Every head bowed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. No one's moving. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. They're going to play that little song and sing it. Lord, here's my hands. Here's my feet. And this song starts out by saying, I wish that I could go turn the curtain back. And redo some things. Now, listen, buddy. Lord have mercy. Do I wish that? I'd give anything in this world if I could go back and change some things, but I can't. I can't. I know I'm sit around and water in it for the rest of my life. I will make the best out of it from here on. Listen, there's, there's probably a hundred people in here this morning. You need to give the Lord your heart.
You know what he wants? Your heart. He, if you got your heart, he'll get your money. If he's got your heart, he'll get your time. He'll get your attention. Get in your heart. Come on. Come on. Come on. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you would take every single person in here this morning and work on our heart, Lord. Work on our heart. Lord, I want to give you my heart again, anew and afresh this morning. Help us, oh God, we pray. We love you. God, do a miracle right here this morning. Save that one which needs to be saved. Touch that one that needs to be touched. In Jesus' name we pray. And for His sake. Amen. If you sing it, you come right now. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on. That's right. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Come on. Amen. Get your heart. The Lord said, love you with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your heart. That's what the Bible says. You give Him your heart. Everything else will be all right. Amen. How about a teenager? Young man? Young lady? Yeah, man. Hey, man. Give me your hand. Yeah, man. Here I am, Lord. Excuse me, Lord. Yeah, man. Give it to us. Come on. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on, then. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use my hand. Here's my feet. You give him your hand. Give him your feet. That's right. That's right. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back. I can't go back. I can live for today. I can live for you today. Amen. 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 Listen to these words now. Give him your hand. There are so many things I wish I could. Oh God. Oh God. Give him your hand. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Here I am. say as, as far as I can tell as far as I know my, the Lord's got my heart that means I'm not deliberately holding anything back I ain't perfect I'm a long way from I failed the Lord a thousand times a day but it sure is a blessing just say alright Lord here I am 
You deserve it. I don't. Here I am. My body's a living cell. Whatever you want to do with it. Whatever you want to send me. Whatever you want to do. So I'm scared to say that. You think he's going to make a mistake? God ain't going to hurt you. You know what we mess up? When we hold back a little bit for this. We hold back a little bit for that. We hold that little corner over here. That little something in the basement. And we hold on to it. That's what. That's our flag of our, our generation of Christians. Divided heart. People standing here right now. You love the Lord. You love the Bible. But there's that little something. Little activity. Little habit. Little place you go. Little thing you do. That you're holding on to. Now I'm not saying you're not going to quit sinning. I'm just saying. You can't, you can't let your heart be divided. Give it all to them this morning. One more course girls. Just one more chorus. Okay. Amen. Come on. So here I am. Get it to us. Amen. Get it to us. He's going to hurt you. God's not going to hurt you. Say, let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use my hands. Use my feet. Amen. All I have is yours. Oh, Lord. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. Can't go back. I can't go back. I can live for you today. I can live Amen. for you today. All God's people said. All right. Now listen. It's coming up on the most important, biggest, exciting time of the year. Just a few weeks. Youth rally. We'll be starting our fast. We're going to buckle down. It's time to buckle down, people. The world's getting worse every day. It's time to buckle down. And we're going to do it by the help of the Lord. Amen? Y'all say amen, preacher? Amen. I hope. You said, oh, no, he's going to ask us. You ought to thank the Lord for it, that I pressure you. Push you, try to do, get you to do right. The Lord will bless you for it. So we're, going, we're fixing to buckle down here in a few weeks now. And so let's get our heart. Don't hold nothing back. Don't hold nothing back. When you leave here saying, if there's anything I'm holding back, Lord, get it out. And your flesh will say, no. Because I get it out. And your flesh will say, no. And you're like, get it out. And your flesh will say, well, my goodness, it ain't that bad. You're, you're going to have that fight. You're going to have that fight. And you just keep claiming the victory and doing right. He'll bless you for it. Okay? All right. Glory Bowl here tonight at 6 o'clock. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be fun. So let's all bow our head and have a word of prayer. And uh, we'll, we'll go. Uh, and have a little time fellowship before you go. Be careful getting out of here. Still, still wet outside, but uh, be watch the kids. Okay, Mr. Fletcher, go ahead.